Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Now today we're making something called an Aztec chocolate cake, which is basically just a soccer tour with some spices added to it. So it's very easy to customize the soccer tour or any kind of cake by adding some flavorings to it. We're only calling it Aztec just to give it a fun, nifty name. So what we're going to use today to make it spicier, to make it the Aztec style, is we're going to be using chili powder and we're going to be using cayenne red pepper. Now the chili powder you can use in the cake. Um, it's got, you know, it's got other spices other than red pepper in it, so it's going to be a little bit more earthy, a little bit stronger flavored. If you want something a little bit on the sweeter side, it's still pretty, pretty spicy, just use cayenne pepper instead. Um, you can use the same amount substituted for one to one. Uh, we're using two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, so use two and a half teaspoons of the red chili powder, or you can use two teaspoons because sometimes this can be a little bit more potent because it's just straight chili powder. Um, we're also going to use half a teaspoon of cinnamon just to round up the flavor and make it a little bit more earthy. We're also going to be making a chocolate sauce today, a spicy chocolate sauce, an Aztec chocolate sauce. Uh, and you don't want to use chili powder for that. You want to just use the red, uh, red pepper or the cayenne pepper, the ground cayenne pepper. So we're just going to go ahead and get straight into it. Um, I've already made my French meringue. If you need to know how to make that, just uh, click the button on your screen. Um, we're going to use, let's see, six egg whites with four ounces of granulated sugar to make the uh, meringue. On the mixer I have four and a half ounces of unsalted butter. I went ahead and just smushed that up. Um, it was at room temperature so I just let the paddle attachment just run a few times so that way it wasn't one solid stick. To that we're going to add four and three eighths ounces of sifted powdered sugar and we're also going to have six egg yolks. We're going to have four and a half ounces of bittersweet chocolate. You can use chocolate chips or you can use uh, regular chocolate and just chop it up. You want to melt it down in the microwave or over a double boiler and just let it cool down just a little bit to room temperature so it's just not piping hot. We also have five and five eighths ounces of all-purpose flour and we sifted that together with our spices. And we're going to add that in at the end. We're also going to add in a little bit of vanilla extract. So why don't we go ahead and just go straight to the mixer. All right, to so the butter we're going to go ahead and add in the powdered sugar and we're just going to go ahead and beat those together. Okay, once your sugar and your butter are light in color and airy, we can go ahead and add in our yolks one at a time. We've got six egg yolks, and we're going to go ahead and scrape in between each addition as necessary. So usually like in between every two you should scrape, so that way you're not stopping every single time. Alright, once all your yolks are added, we're going to go ahead and just give it a splash of vanilla extract. Okay, once your vanilla extract gets incorporated, go ahead and scrape down the sides of your bowl. Add in the chocolate and work that in on a medium speed. Okay, so the next step is to fold in our egg white meringue in about two to three additions. So you want to start off with like a third. I probably started off with a little bit too much. And what we're doing is we're just going to lighten up this heavy chocolate mixture with the yolks and the chocolate and the butter. And we're going to try and make it more like the meringue. And while we're doing this, we're actually losing a lot of those air cells that we created in that meringue. But we're making it lighter so that way the later additions, uh, fewer and fewer of those air cells will be destroyed. All right, so your mixture doesn't have to be completely streak free at this point, and that's fine. You don't want to over mix it and lose all those air cells by just pushing and pushing and pushing. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold in our flour. So we're going to push in a little bit more so we're going to lose some more air cells. So that's why you don't want to overwork the meringue and over fold it in. So go ahead and add in all the flour and spice at once. And we're just going to fold it in until there's no more streaks. Okay, so we only need one nine inch cake pan for this recipe, so we're gonna go ahead and pour on all that batter into our prepared cake pan. I just lightly greased it with some pan release and used a small square of parchment paper to hold that in place. And we don't need a whole bottom covered parchment paper because that one little square is gonna be all we need to release it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bake this at about 300 degrees for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, basically until a toothpick inserted into the center of the cake comes out clean. That's when we'll know it's done. Okay, so since we're not going to ice this cake, now like I said, icing is um, optional, but I want to make a more rustic style, very easy to do cake for anyone to have access to. If you want to ice it, I do recommend um, using like a chocolate buttercream or maybe even a glaze. Um, but what we're going to do since we're not icing this cake is we're going to create two dessert sauces to go along with it. One of the sauces is, is a caramel sauce. So we're going to start off basically the same way we start off making simple syrup. So in this pot I have one pound, eight ounces of granulated sugar, um, a pinch of cream of tartar, and then just enough water to make the sugar 
um, fluid so I can run my hand through it. Make sure there's no clumps on the bottom or on the sides. Bring it over to the stove, put the lid on top and cook it on high until it comes to a boil, which is about to come to a boil now. Now that cream of tartar that we add helps prevent crystallization. It's not a surefire thing, but it does help. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to allow it to boil for a little bit with the lid on. And what that does is it allows the steam to form condensation on the lid and then it's going to roll down the sides and wash down any sugar that might be in the sides. Because any sugar in the sides of your pot, that's going to, um, that, that can cause crystallization. So we're basically allowing the lid and the pot and the steam to wash down the sides for us. So it saves us a step. Okay, after about a minute or so, it doesn't have to be all that long, take off the lid. And then we're just going to go ahead and let it um, caramelize. And what we're going to do is we're not going to stir it or anything like that. We're just going to let it um, boil off. And what's, what's going on is we're evaporating a lot of that steam, a lot of that water out of the sugar so that we're left with more and more sugar. All right, so as more and more of the water evaporates um, out of the sugar, you're going to notice that the bubbles that are bubbling on the surface of the sugar um, Start, be, start to become larger and start to pop more slowly. That's going to let you know that you're getting close to that, caramelize, that caramelizing point. Okay, now we're coming up to the point where our sugar is starting to caramelize. It's starting to turn darker in color, starting to turn golden and brownish. Now the darker we let it go, the more caramelized, caramelized it's going to be and the stronger, more intense the caramel flavor is going to be. The lighter it is, the sweeter it is, it's going to be. I usually like my caramel sauce on a sweeter end. So I'm probably going to take it off pretty soon because it's going to continue to darken in the pot while I get the camera and the ingredients in place. All right, so this caramel is going to be a little bit on the lighter side, but that's all right. We'll work with it. So we want to go ahead and add in our heavy cream first, 13 and a half ounces. The reason we add it first is because we're also going to add in three ounces of unsalted butter. And if the heavy cream spurts back at us and burns us, that's okay because it's just going to evaporate right off right away. This is a fat, so it's going to cling onto your hands for a little bit. If you let your butter warm up to room temperature before you add it, it'll melt down a little bit quicker. All right, let's go ahead and whisk this all together. All right, if you need to, go back onto the stove over like a medium-low heat and continue warming up your caramel sauce until the butter and everything is incorporated. There's no sugar stuck to the bottom of the pot. And go ahead and pour that into a separate bowl to cool off. To make the chocolate sauce, um, bring together eight ounces of sugar and eight ounces of water um, stir them together with your hands to make sure it's nice and fluid, there's no clumps of sugar at the bottom, and bring that to a boil. Meanwhile, you want to sift four ounces of cocoa powder into a metal bowl, like I have there, and you also want to weigh out two ounces of dark chocolate chips or, sh or uh, chopped chocolate, and one and a half teaspoons of red cayenne pepper powder, ground red cayenne powder. So once your sugar and your water come to a boil, you want to go ahead and temper your cocoa powder kind of like if you were tempering eggs, and that's just because chocolate can seize. All right, make sure you carefully whisk or stir your chocolate sauce or your tempered chocolate sauce um, before bringing it back to the heat because you want to make sure there's no clumps of cocoa powder anywhere along the bottom. You want to go ahead and put that bowl that you just used of the cocoa powder, tempering the cocoa powder, put that in the sink because you don't want to use that because we're going to make sure that there's no clumps of cocoa powder in our final product, and sometimes there can be clumps in there. You don't want to add that in. So we're just going to go ahead and bring this to a second boil over like medium-high heat. You don't want to burn it by accident. Okay, once your chocolate mixture has come to a second boil, remove it from the stove, and you're going to go ahead and stir in your two ounces of melted chocolate, or your two ounces of chocolate chips, and just make sure to stir that in until it's nice and melted. Okay, once you think your chocolate chips are melted, go ahead and strain it into a separate bowl. And the reason we strain it is because we want to make sure that the chocolate chips that didn't actually melt and any cocoa powder that might have clumped up gets strained out. So you want a nice smooth sauce. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and stir in our one and a half teaspoons of ground red pepper. Now, if you want to make a regular chocolate sauce, don't use that red pepper. And that's pretty much it. It's a very easy recipe. It makes a very dark chocolate sauce. Um, Sometimes I like to use ganache instead of chocolate sauce, but this sauce works very well too with plated desserts. And so I'm going to go ahead and chill this and let it cool down to room temperature basically um, until it's ready to use, and it'll thicken as it cools. So once your Aztec chocolate cake comes out of the oven, go ahead and let it cool off completely in the pan. Then you want to go ahead and release it, and then if you want to, you should um, 
peel off, like it has this, it forms this kind of like hard crust layer. You can just pop that right off. It peels right off. And then if you want to, you can trim off the sides just by slicing down with a knife, straight down on the sides, all the way around, making as many cuts as you can because the more cuts you make, the more round it'll come out. It, might, it won't have as many spikes and points like a octagon or whatever. Um, and afterwards, you just want to put this like a little breath of powdered sugar on top to kind of just highlight all the nooks and crannies, and then you can garnish it with some shaved chocolate. Just take a vegetable peeler and just run it along a like a block of chocolate. Very, very easy to do. And that's pretty much it. You just want to leave it plain like this, unless you want to ice it or glaze it or whatever, but I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, now, the chili pepper or the chili powder flavor is very mild. It's not, it's not super strong, so if you want to increase the spice in the cake, you probably can double up. Um, you probably can double it if you want a really intense flavor. Other than that, so we're going to go ahead and plate it up using the chocolate sauce and the caramel sauce that we made. I have our chocolate sauce and our caramel sauce in little sauce bottles. Now you don't want to store them like this because you can't microwave them because these bottles just melt. So when you store them, you want to keep them in some kind of microwavable bowl or something like that. Then you can pour the warmed um, fluid, the warm caramel, warm chocolate sauce into the bottle using a funnel. Um, but we're just going to do what we're just going to do is just pipe some dots. And when you're piping the dots, you want to squeeze without moving around, and that'll give you a nice smooth dot. And then you can just create um, a row of dots using different sizes, so that way it gives it a nice different look to it. Right? Another style you can do is you can line up a row of dots, and then just drag your toothpick through it, and that'll create almost like hearts through them by using a toothpick. You could, of course, just draw squiggles on the plate if you want, just like that. All right, and with the really dry desserts, um, kind of like Linzer, um, or you could, for this cake, you can consider a dry dessert because it has no icing on it. Um, you want to flood the plate so that way there's a lot of um, sauce to go with the dry dessert. Now there's a couple things you can do with this. You can do Napoleon style. Draw some evenly spaced lines. And then going back and forth, drag your toothpick. and that'll give you a nice complex design. And then one final style that we can do, this is more like kind of for Halloween, but I'll show you anyway. You can do a spider web kind of look. Kind of going in the same kind of concept with the Napoleon and start going out one way and then come in the other way. And you just want to repeat that all the way around the circle. All right, that's pretty much it. That's the Aztec chocolate cake, the Aztec chocolate sauce, and just plain caramel sauce. Remember that if you want to make plain chocolate sauce, just leave the crushed or the ground red cayenne pepper out. Um, and But the amount that we put in, this is a very intensely spicy chocolate sauce, so you probably don't want to increase it anymore. If you want a more mild or flavor, you can reduce it. But because the chili powder is so mild in the chocolate cake and this is very intense, it kind of balances it out. But feel free to adjust the spices to make them the way that you want. If you want to see more uh, dessert sauce designs, you can go on my website, www.theauberginechef.com, and you can check under uh, decorative techniques. And other than that, I hope you learned a lot today. Thank you for watching. And remember, the Aubergine Chef, demystifying dessert, one recipe at a time.